how is this a thing? How have I been given this car? Hi and welcome back to Joe Talks Cars and welcome to another very, very exciting video. So you'll have seen in a previous video, I visited the garage SUV Prestige out at Weatherby. And while I was there, they surprised me by giving me a 991 911 Carrera to borrow for a few days, do some reviews on it, talk about it, and tell you why you should or shouldn't buy one. Many of you will know, I have been thinking about buying a 911, wanted to swap the Cayman for something with a rear seat. So this is a perfect opportunity now to find out whether this would fit my lifestyle and whether I really do need a 911 in my life. So what exactly do we have here? So we have a 911, it's a 991 generation 2012 plate. It's got a 3.4 litre naturally aspirated engine and it has around 350 horsepower. So it's a lot more powerful than my Cayman, but with a similar engine size. And crucially, it's a flat six normally aspirated engine. You'll notice on the newer 911s, they do actually come with a smaller engine and a turbo. So a lot of people regard the 991 as one of the last truly normally aspirated 911s, apart from the like GT cars and stuff like that. The thing that really interested me about this car when I saw it at SUV Prestige is the fact that it's actually a base car. This is just a normal Carrera, very few options and a very, very standard car. This sort of thing is what you would have got if you walked into a Porsche garage in 2012 and asked them for a, a 911. This is more or less what you'd get if you didn't tick many option boxes. It's a free color, it's the standard wheels, and it's got very, very few options on it. And that's what makes this quite interesting because with 911s and with a lot of cars at the moment, people always tell you, you need the GT3, you need the GT4, you need PDK, you need Sport Chrono Pack. And I've often wondered, do you actually need all of that stuff? Do you need a stopwatch on your dashboard, for example? Do you actually need that? This car doesn't come with any of it. So it's a really interesting test to see whether I can live with a bog standard, more or less, if, they can, if you can call a, a Porsche a bog standard car, bog standard Porsche Carrera. So let's have a quick walk around the car and talk about what things this has or actually doesn't have on it. So let's have a look at the spec on this extremely basic base model Porsche 911. So round the front, it's got Xenon lights, which is optional. It's got very little else on the front, if I'm honest. I haven't looked at the spec sheet, so this is just based on my knowledge. If you spot something that you think is an option and I've missed it, then just let me know in the comments. The wheels, I think they're standard, so they've not picked any, any fancy wheels. 19 inch on the front, 20s on the back, pretty standard 911 stuff. It's got red brake calipers, which I believe on the base car, that is actually an option. Nothing weird on the side of this, it's just all standard stuff. They've picked the best option round the back though. What they've gone for is the sport exhaust. Desperately need a sport exhaust on my Cayman because if it can make it sound like this, I'll be very, very happy indeed. These quad exhaust pipes in matte black look absolutely stunning and the car just sounds absolutely glorious. Apart from that on the outside, that's more or less it. The rest of the options are on the inside and they're not really that extensive, but there's some really nice tasteful choices. So we'll jump on in, have a look at what this car has got on the inside. Right, so jumping into this 911, what do we have in here? Well, interestingly, this car is fitted with the manual gearbox. So regular viewers of my channel will know my Cayman is a Tiptronic and people will know my preference for an automatic. But it's been really nice using this manual gearbox. It's got seven speed, quite unusual when you put it into seventh. But again, it's quite a nice thing. I don't believe it's an option. I believe that PDK was an option. Actually, the seven speed manual was the standard fit. This car, like I said, has not got that many options. It's unfortunately missing the uh, sports seats. When I first bought a Porsche, everyone said, you must get the sports seats. They're absolutely key. And I've realized that that is the case. When you sat in them, although they do grip you around the sides, I'm missing all the shoulder support. Kind of weird. And I think if I was to get a 911, I'd make sure it had the sports seats. The rest of it though, it's a very standard affair. It's got the PCCM, so the Porsche sort of sat navy thing totally out of date, useless now. You'd need Apple CarPlay if you were to use this every day. That's, you might as well not have that. Has got Bose sound system, same as my Cayman. Definitely what you need. I was listening to music on the way down here and it sounds incredible. Interestingly, they have picked a Alcantara headliner, which I think is one of the nicest options on this car. It really does make this interior look stunning. It, it darkens it, it brings it all in and makes it feel 
a lot more sporty. It's got some interesting options on the centre console, things that you wouldn't necessarily think that someone would choose on a base Carrera. People would normally pick some more styling mods, they'd normally go for the seats and some other bits and pieces like that, but they've actually picked the active suspension. Very interesting system there. So I tried it in sport mode, it's extremely hard, put it back into normal and it's still very, very hard. And I have heard the car is then dropped by 30 mil for it. So I wouldn't necessarily go for that now, knowing what I know now, but yeah, they've spe specified the, I think it's called PASM, the active suspension kind of weird but yeah they've obviously realized they needed it for some bumpy roads or something but it actually makes the car just bumpier overall the really nice thing about the interior though is the steering wheel so because this car is so poorly optioned got no buttons on the steering wheel at all porsches don't often like spam the steering wheel with buttons but this one has got nothing and it's just really really nice that it's just a plain steering wheel it's all focused on the driving and that's all you should be doing in here you shouldn't be playing around with buttons and haptic rubbish that you can get on modern cars this is just a plain wheel and i really really like that same goes for the dials they've kept them all analog apart from one which is digital that display is like the little carrera logo which is nice and the sat nav appears in there but other than that on the inside it's a pretty standard affair and to be honest i could live with this you don't need a stopwatch on your porsche i don't care what anyone says why do you need a stopwatch Put it in the comments if you usually stop watching on a daily basis. Let me know what you use it for, because I've never really worked that one out. So like I said at the start of this video, one of the main reasons why I would consider buying a 911 is for that back seat. I desperately need a back seat in my car because I've now got a child and it'd be really nice if she could come along and enjoy the car with me. So interestingly, I'm going to see if I can fit in the back because I've never sat in the back of a 911. They're a four seater car, they sell it as a four seater car, but can you actually fit a man in the back of it? I don't think there's a video online actually showing whether someone can fit in one. People just keep saying, this is a four seater. Well, I'm six foot tall, I'm not that fat, and can I get in? First impression, not good. It's uncomfortable. Oh God, it, it's not good. There's Oh, okay. So yeah, you, you can't really fit in the back of a 911. I can't straighten my head. I'd have to sit like this, but then there's no room for my feet. And then if I pull the chair back, when the chair is in my position, it's now very uncomfortable. It's like a stress position. It's really not good. Really, really bad. So yeah. I think if you could sit in the back of this, maybe you're five foot two, you'd probably get in, but my height, no chance. This isn't the four seater. Um, it has got Isofix, but we have actually put my child in the back of this and found a further problem to having a 911 if you've got a child. And that is that, yeah, it's got Isofix. Put the Isofix mounting point in there and put the seat back. You can't put the seat back because the Isofix is in the way. Work that one out, that's strange. And then not only that, but her child's seat Without the Isofix, I thought, it's fine, I'll put that in. Yeah, it doesn't fit either, because it's really narrow, so you can't fit that. So the only option is to go to Porsche and buy a child seat, and they're 500 quid. So you need to factor that in. If you've got a baby or a small child and you want a Porsche 911 to put them in the back, it's an extra 500 quid to put your kid in, because you certainly don't want to be sitting in the back and putting them on the front. That's not going to happen, right? I've got to try and get back out now. This is, it's like something being birthed. Oh. Not a four-seater. Right, well what is this car like to drive? Well I still can't quite believe that I'm driving an i11. I only started my channel a year ago and to be given the keys to one of these, not just for an afternoon, but for a long time, is quite an experience really. So far, the initial impressions are the suspension is far too hard. The PASM Porsche Adaptive Stability Management or whatever it's called, that adaptive suspension, it's awful. I've heard that it's too hard on Porsches and if you select it, you probably would regret it. I certainly would now. I was always under the impression that you meant to have it and everyone says, make sure you spec it. Well, now I know how it feels, I wouldn't. 
you press that sport button or the turn the su suspension into firm and it is undrivable. It's undrivable on roads like this. Maybe in European roads it would be really good, but not on ours. It's absolutely shocking. The driving position is as you'd expect from a Porsche, it's, it's perfect. It's very similar to the Cayman. You can see the little bumps of the uh, headlight clusters out in front and you instantly know you're in a 911. Someone who drives a Cayman all the time, it's kind of weird to see his back seats. More on that later. But yeah, it's a really, really nice car to drive. Everything's very intuitive. The only thing I would say is, although I'm stuck behind traffic now and I can't really push the car hard, when you do push it hard, it does tend to skip around on the road. The front end of it is almost loose. And I've heard that's a characteristic of the 911, but yeah, the front end just bounces and you hit a cat's eye or anything like that and it just sends it off course. It's, it's really unusual. I, I assume it's because of all the weight in the boot, where the engine is, but I don't know. The Cayman doesn't do that. The Cayman feels a lot more sturdy on the road. Um, surprisingly, the 911 doesn't feel as secure. The sound of this car, with that sports exhaust really makes me want to get a sports exhaust fitted to my car. It sounds absolutely glorious. Obviously we are now stuck behind traffic so you can't hear it, but when you get to open the taps, oh my God, it sounds fantastic. It almost purrs. It sounds, probably people are gonna hate me for this, but it sounds very similar to like a Golf R32 when they've got a straight through exhaust on them. Sounds just like that. And they're one of the most glorious sounding cars ever but hopefully we'll get onto a straight, I'll be able to floor it, and you can hopefully, the audio will pick it up, but the car sounds just incredible. Earlier on, I think I did mention these seats. So this car is not a very highly optioned car, which it doesn't really matter for the most part. However, these seats, they're not the best. I do miss the sports seats. These are very narrow up the top. They don't offer that much support, but they're very comfortable still. Like you could genuinely daily drive this. Fuel economy, very similar to the Cayman, sits around 20 mpg when driven properly. Anything lower and you're probably in license banning territory anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a really pleasant car to drive around in. A few things that are worth mentioning though is how my other half feels towards the car. So it's quite important for me that my wife likes my car because we both share the car. Like we have two cars, but we drive either one of them, depending which is on the driveway, gets used. So it's really, really important that she likes the car and she doesn't like the 911. Now, I do quite like the car, but she really doesn't. She said it's not designed for a woman, it's designed by a man for a man. The clutch travel is too long, the seat in position's wrong, the car feels too big, many, many things. And if I'm honest, she's not bowled over by the practicality in the back. There's me trying to sell it to her as a family car. It's not really gone down well, Porsche's not done well. I don't think I'm gonna be allowed to buy one of these anytime soon because it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. So as you can hear, the car sounds absolutely sick. It sounds unreal at full chat. And that brings me on to one of its issues. This car is quite flat at below 5,000 revs. It really doesn't come alive. The Cayman, although you have to rev it out, it seems to be more responsive, more alive, and it's ready to play from a very, very low RPM. This isn't. You put your foot down in this, two and a half thousand revs, third gear. It's flat, it's flat as a fart. Our Golf GTI would be quicker. You have to rev the absolute nuts off it to get anything. But when you do, second gear, you're breaking the motorway speed limit in second gear to hear that engine. So again, it's not really a great thing. It just means you can't really exploit the performance on the road. It would be more of a track day thing, which is a bit strange that being a Carrera, it should be a sports car for the road. But yeah, when you get up in the revs, you really do notice the extra grunt that 50 horsepower brings and the speed you can carry is alarming. Very, very alarming. For a base model car, this is not the GT, this is not the turbo, this is a base model, it can shift. It really can shift. And it is really nice to drive. Just the looseness on that front end is something I just don't know whether I'd get used to. I imagine the car would understeer on a wet road. We're very lucky at the moment, it's very, very warm and the roads are dry, so it just grips. 
it really grips nicely. But I think if you were on a wet road, you would find this thing understeering. You're not gonna get that from a Cayman. So talking about the Cayman, how does it compare day to day? And how do I feel that over the past few days of living with this car, does it fit my lifestyle? Well, I have to say, overall, I prefer the Cayman. I know people are gonna go mental about that, but I genuinely do think it's a better car. This car is from 2012, my Cayman is from 2006, and the Cayman doesn't feel that old. In fact, one of my friends thought that they were from the same era. The interior is different, but the car doesn't feel six years newer. It really doesn't. In terms of living with it, obviously you have the added drawback of it being a 911 and people hating on you for driving a 911, showing off or whatever they think you're doing, but it does draw a lot more attention than what the Cayman does. And I don't like that about it. I don't like all the attention it grabs. It's not a red Ferrari with a crema interior, which you'll see in a upcoming video of me driving one of those. It's not as bad as that, but it's not far off. It has surprised me. I always thought Porsches were the understated sports car on the road. Turns out in a 911, nah, you're, you're up for all the abuse that anyone wants to haul at you. Depends if you want to, want to cope with that, want to deal with that. It's not really for me. So would I swap it for my Cayman? Well, I wanted to, I really did. When they passed me the keys, I thought this is just a taster of the next car that I'm gonna buy and I was really, really excited. And I think I'm coming away less inclined to swap to a 911. I do still want a 911 and I haven't ruled one out, but I think I need to try maybe the newer one, maybe an older one. I need to try something else because I don't think the 991 Carrera actually works for me but it's a bloody lovely car if you like and if you want a Porsche and you want to drive a 911 you're not going to be disappointed I think I'm just spoiled because there's no denying the sound of that and that's before we press the sport button Jesus So, in conclusion, what do I think of this 911? I've had the car for a couple of days now and got used to its quirks and obviously been out on a few drives like this one, the review. And yeah, I'm feeling very mixed emotions about this car. This car is a car that I've always wanted. I've always wanted a 911. I've dreamed of owning a 911. And I don't know what it is, but the more time I spend with it, the more time I just dislike the car. There's that weird clutch problem. I could solve that by getting an automatic. There's the fact you can't fit a child seat in. I'd have to buy one from Porsche. They're all compromises. And what I wanted from a 911 was for it to be a no compromise sports car. And I don't care what anyone says. I, I think it's quite compromised. It's more compromised than I ever imagined. And I think unless something changes, and the new 911 is better, or even if I look back at the old one and have a go in that and realize that is what I want, I can't see myself owning a 911 anytime soon, which is a huge shame. Yeah, so this car, I wanted to love it. I desperately wanted to love it. I wanted my wife to really like it because for me, that's a huge thing. Your partner has got to like it because you don't want it to be an awkward car. At the moment, if my Cayman is last on the driveway, that's the car that gets used, and that's because it's usable. It's such a great car. I can't really see myself changing to this. Not this particular car, possibly. Maybe an older 911, and maybe a newer one. Just not this one.